Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever in the world you are, we are glad that you're with us. We wish to welcome you to the midweek Bible study of uh, the Selang Church of Christ. We are located, if you have been to our building, you know where we are. But if you have never been to our building, we are located in Bayan or city proper of Silang, Kabiti, Philippines, which is approximately 30 miles or 50 kilometers south of downtown Manila. We wish to welcome each of you and everyone who's joining us from someplace else uh, to our study. We hope that our study of God's word is of benefit to you. Um, join me in prayer, please, if you will. Dear Lord, we come before you this morning, this afternoon, this evening, wherever in the world we are. We know you are there with us. We ask, Lord, that you look down upon us, grant us strength and wisdom. Help us each to grow in thy will so that we might be more salt and more light to the world around us serving as a uh, cleansing and pres preservation force. We ask, Lord, that you help each of us as we touch those that are near and dear to our hearts, to help each and every one of us to not only grow in thy will, but to help others do so also. To Christ's name we pray. Amen. Good Amen. morning. We're going to start a study today because... We've been gone for a few weeks, uh, and this, today's study is the parables of Jesus Christ. Um, so I might ask a question to start. Why did Jesus Christ teach in parable? Why is it that Jesus Christ taught in parables? Anna? Uh, Jesus Christ uh, taught in parable just uh, for me it's like a uh, example where you can uh, you can cite your situation or getting a, getting a lesson from a situation sir okay um Miss Giselle? Yes, sir. Why did Jesus Christ teach in parables? Uh, I think, sir, to know about uh, uh, the understanding about the Bible, sir. Okay. There, there wasn't a Bible at that time, but okay. We, the Bible's going to come along a few decades later. Katrina. Um, it says in Matthew chap uh, chapter 10 or chapter 13, verse 10, the disciples asked Jesus, why? Uh, this is what it says. Um, Matthew 13, 10, the disciples came to him and asked, why do you speak to people in parables? This is Jesus. 11, he replied, because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. Twelve, whoever has will, whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. This is why I speak to them in parables. Okay. Shall I continue? <laughs> you, 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 you hit it right on the head. And we'll let Mary Faye chime in here just in case she has something to add. Uh, well, before Katrina says that uh, verses, um, I was about to say that maybe because Jesus wanted us, um, um, he teaches in parables because he wants the good person, the the one who's who in, who's enthusiastic to learn about what he is telling us. Okay. Now, we, by the way, you guys missed Bible study yesterday, and we covered this very same topic uh, from the book of Matthew. If your mind and your heart is open, then you are 
as Mary Faye said, eager to learn. If, however, your mind and your heart is closed, then you're not willing to listen to the things of Christ. And by the way, you, you did a great job there, uh, Katrina. Uh, we each need to have our mind and our heart open. Uh, and do we all fail at this sometimes? I'm sure we do. However, our job is to be open. Um, let's go to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. And uh, Anna, if you don't mind, would you start us in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 7? Okay. Matthew chapter 7 verse 7 says... Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. Okay. Verse 8, please. Giselle? Okay. And verse 8, For everyone who asks, receives, and the one who seeks, finds, and the one who knock, it will be opened. Okay. Verse uh, 9, please, Katrina? Nine says, which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Okay. Ten, Mary Faye. Verse ten. Or if he asks for a fish, we'll give him a snake. A snake. Okay. By the way, if you had a child, and not all of us do, but we will pick... Miss Anna, because we can pick on her today, okay? If Anya comes to you and says, Mommy, can I have a piece of bread, please? Would you give her a stone? Of course no. <laughs> of course not, right? Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> what about if she says to you, Mommy, good to go. Can I have a... Uh, Let's go back to Matthew chapter 7. Can I ask, have a fish, please? You know, one of the little dried fish that we love in the Philippines, one of the little fish. Instead, you're going to hand her a scorpion. Would you do that? No. <laughs> what about you, Giselle? No, sir, I cannot do that to my kids. Mary Faye. Oh, absolutely. Um, absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely not. But Katrina could, right? <laughs> to that little kid, if she's really makulet, <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I will not. Definitely. None of us would. None of us. If us people who are sinners, who are weak and we lack knowledge in our walk with Christ. If we know how to give good to our children, how much more does God know how to give what is good? How much more does God who doesn't make mistakes, and by the way, none of us are a mistake. Okay, let's move on from Matthew chapter 7 to Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. Start us in verse 16, please. 16. I think Katrina, uh, I think, uh, oh. Katrina did a good job of covering us. But 11, chapter 16, okay. Matthew, chapter 11, verse 16. Anna, we'll start with you if it's okay again. Okay, yes. Matthew 11, 16 says, But to what shall I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to their playmates. 
who played okay. the flute for you and you did not dance. We sang a dirge and you did not mourn. By the way, what is a dirge? No idea, brother. It, a dirge? Somebody give me a Google on that. I'll, I'll, uh, you see. That's why I want us to use our study materials. Uh, Miss Giselle, would you tell us what a dirge is according to Google? Oh my gosh. Examine for the dead. You're on mute, Ataji. Um, Oh, like, sir. I have it here. You who has it? Alignment for the dead, especially one forming part of a funeral rite. Okay. So what does that mean? Um Sir, a uh, song for a uh, grief or uh, so, lamentation. Songs for a grief, right? Yes. A funeral, a dirge is where they, uh, a dirge is normally played at a funeral. It's not a happy <laughs> song. It's a sad song. But what we're seeing from Jesus the Christ is he says to the people that he, they wanted to play a song. But the song neither matched. Uh, give me verse 18. Matthew chapter 11, verse 18. Uh, Katrina, please. 18 says, For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. Okay, 19, please. Mary Faye? 19. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, Here is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners, but wisdom is proved right by her deeds. Okay. So what is Jesus Christ actually saying here in Matthew chapter 11? What is he saying? What is he telling us? People are looking for physical signs. By the way, do they look for physical signs today? Yes, they do. Um, what they're actually asking is when John the Baptist came, he was neither drinking or eating, and they said he has a demon. But when Christ came, Christ was a fit savior to sinners and a friend of sinners. He ate and he drank. Did they say, oh, okay, he must be a good teacher? No, they criticized the things outside of their own control in order to draw a differentiation, even though we know that Jesus the Christ was the Messiah, but we also understand that John the Baptist was the reed in the wilderness, if you will. He was the one calling out ahead of time that we should all pay attention to. Um, moving on to John chapter 6. John chapter 6. And would you read verse 60? 60 for us, please. Mary Faye? John chapter 6, verse 40. 60. 60 oh, 60. On hearing it, many of his disciples said, this is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? Okay. This is a hard teaching. Who's going to be able to accept it? Chorus 61, please. 61, it says, aware that his disciples were grumbling about this, 
Jesus said to them, Does this offend you? Or in our English Standard Version, it says, Do you take offense at this? Mm -hmm. um, 61, please. 61. This is what I just read. No, you just read 61. Yeah, you're correct. 62, please. Anna? 62 says, Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? By the way, there are people out there who deny the divinity of Jesus Christ. But what does it tell us in John chapter 6, verse 62? He is ascending back to what? Where he was before. Mm -hmm. Where is it was he was before? He was in heaven, ruling with God. Giselle? 63. Uh, 63. Uh, verse 63, it is the spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. It is the spirit that gives life, not the flesh, right? Uh, Miss Katrina? 64. Yet there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus had known from the beginning which of them did not believe and who would betray him. Jesus Christ not only knew that he would be betrayed, but he knew who was going to do the betraying. Miss Mary Faye? 65. He went on to say, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless the Father has enabled them. No one can come unless the Father has enabled them. You must open your heart. You must open your mind, Cora. At 66, it says, from this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. Now, what happened to the disciples in John in 66? They left. Many of them left, right? Mm -hmm. Some of them left. Well, those of our brethren who happen to be Calvinistic teach what? That you cannot leave. That once Christ draws you, you no longer have any choice. However, what we see here in John chapter 6 is that these disciples decided to leave. Anna, next verse, please. 67 says, so Jesus said to the 12, do you want to go away as well? Do you want to go away as well? Everybody else left. Do you want to go? What do they say, Giselle? And 68, Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. To whom should we go? You have the words of, of eternal, eternal life. life. Katrina 69, we'll, we'll stop there for now, okay? 69 says, we have come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. So what did the Apostle Peter say right here in John chapter 6? Christ, you are the Holy One of God. Okay? That's important for us to know. So using a Bible dictionary, somebody tell me what is a parable. And uh, we will go with Miss Mary Faith. I'll ask the question again, sir. What is a parable? <laughs> according a parable? to, since I know you have a Google open, uh, mm -hmm. what is a parable according to a Bible dictionary? Uh, 
uh, a usually short fictitious story that yeah. illustrates a moral attitude or religious principle. Okay, that's that's very good. Do you do you know what your source was on that by any chance? Um, uh, Miriam Webster. Okay, um, because what I have and I've used uh, a, Oxford. a a Bible yeah. dictionary. Go ahead, Cora. What were you going to say? I said Oxford. Oxford. Okay, Oxford it's a short moral story that was mm -hmm. often expressed with imagery and metaphor. So what we can see is it's a story that Christ told the people in order that they might learn a lesson that is closer to how they actually learn, right? That is closer. So Katrina, you already did this. So why? what did Jesus say his purpose was in speaking in parables? And you can go ahead and get that in Luke chapter 8. Luke 8. eight. Yes. And start, go 16 to 18, please. Luke 8, verse 16 says, No one lights a lamp and hides it in a clay, clay jar, or puts it under a bed. Instead, they put it on a stand so that those who come in can see the light. 17. For, for there is nothing hidden that will not be disclosed, and nothing concealed that will be not known or brought out into the open. Okay. So here's a question for you. When Jesus the Christ spoke in parables, was he intending to reveal or to conceal truth from the, those who heard him? To reveal. Who said that? Gat. Gat, okay. Mary Faye. Uh, to reveal as well. You think so? Reveal. Okay, Cora. Reveal. She said reveal also. Anna. Mm. Hello, Anna. Yes, oh, I mean, <laughs> it um, can be taking strangers uh, to keep some people from understanding what it he was teaching. Okay, who might be those people he didn't want to understand? His, his enemy. I'm not going to say enemies. Um, Giselle, was, were parables designed to uh, enlighten people or to obscure or hide the truth from them uh for me sir enlightenment for the people okay well then we're going to go to another question um when jesus said he that has hears let him hear mm -hmm. what does that mean He is that let them hear. Whoever, uh, going back uh, to Matthew 13, verse yes. 13. Uh, this is why I speak to them in parables. Though seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not hear or understand. Uh, as, what you've, uh, as what we previously know that uh, or discuss that there is enough light uh, for someone who wanted to understand. Meaning, that's the reason why Jesus Christ is speaking parables. Because even though it will be, or for example, he given the word directly to them, but then their hearts are closed. They won't understand and they would not accept it. That is Very why good. he teaches 
you, that way. You, that's the, like I said, all I didn't intend it to be the case, but this is running coincidental to what Bible study was yesterday. If your mind, if your heart is closed, you are correct, Katrina. You're not going to do the things that Christ wants you to do. Okay. So, is there a characteristic that a person must have in order to understand the parables? And Katrina, I'll come to you last because I know you know the answer to that. Mary Faye. Yes. Uh, one of it is, of course, they have an open heart, uh, a soft heart. Okay. I know. Well, that, that's the answer I was looking for. Anybody have anything different? You have to have an open mind and an open heart, right? So, what things are hard or difficult to understand about the parables of Jesus the Christ? Nothing. Only if you have an open heart. Only if you have an open heart, right? Does everybody have an open heart? I, I think not. But not it, all. Okay. It's hard. It's hard if you don't want to accept it. Or you don't want, as what everybody says, you have to have an open mind and an open heart. So... Okay. So, what might we use as guidelines when it comes to understanding the parables of Jesus the Christ? Cora? Say it again. What guidelines might we use to understand the parables of Jesus the Christ? What are the guidelines for us to understand the parables? Yeah, what guidelines can we use? Um, I think um, I might I might say it's our life, it's our life experience. Okay. That's a fair answer. Miss Anna. Um, guidelines. Because understand, listen to what I'm saying. Do we want to add to the word of God? No. No. Oh. No. Do we want to take away from the word of God? No. No. So as we're studying the parables, how might we make sure that we neither add to nor take away from the word? It's just based on the, the world of God's word. Okay. Mr. Self. Yes, sir. Uh, just uh, um, uh, sir, through the uh, scripture, sir. Okay. Katrina. Oh, I will go back to your question. Uh, before, for what? What are the guidelines? Uh, I think it's. Oh. Uh, the guideline could be just have an open heart and an open mind to accept what it is written because it oh, what is written in the bible uh, going back on the bible it because all of all of the guidelines all of the requirements has been given to us just follow what it says do not take away or do not add any just have an open mind and an open heart to accept what should we as Christians do? Okay. 
Mary Faye, you're nodding in your head, yes. Uh, I, actually, I actually agree with what Katrina says, and also aside from um being uh, having an open heart, I want to say um we also have to be eager and enthusiastic to learn and know all about what God says to us. Like, yeah, what she says, we have to stick to what the Bible says. Okay. The Christian. By the way, we this was the. For those of you who missed it yesterday, this came up as a byproduct of a conversation I was having with uh, Vanessa. Mm -hmm. She wanted to know, why is it that some people come to class and they learn the gospel and they never obey it? And in fact, that would be the majority and then she wanted to know why some people who come to class and obey the gospel don't remain faithful. Katrina, I'm going to toss that one off to you. It, it is already given to us that some, just like what we read a while ago, even God, even Jesus Christ, so in his time, some of the believers do not or leave so yes. it will happen to us right now nothing's it's, changed right yes. except i'm not divine jesus christ was yeah. and yeah. if you if hear it, happens it to jesus christ it can happen to us that's correct if it can happen to jesus the christ the messiah it can and will happen to us um Let's go to Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. And Anna, start us in verse 8, please. Yes. One moment. Isaiah 6. Chapter 8 po. Ay, chapter, chapter 6. six uh, verse chapter... 8. Verse 8. Okay. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, Here I am. Send me. Do we always answer the same way Isaiah did? No. No. Verse 9, please, Giselle. And verse 9, and he said, go and say to these people, keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but do not perceive. Keep on hearing, but don't understand. Keep on seeing, but do not perceive. <laughs> verse 10 to go with that, Katrina. <clears throat> Then says, make the heart of this people calloused, make their ears dull, and close their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn and be healed. So what is required if we want to turn and be healed? That our hearts and our minds must be open, right? Verse 11, please. Mary Faye. Verse 11. Then I said, For how long, Lord? And he answered, Until the cities lie ruined and without inhabitant, until the houses are left deserted and the fields ruined and ravaged. That does not sound very encouraging, does it? Yeah. <laughs> Cora. Verse 12. And 12 says, Until the Lord has sent everyone far away, and the land is utterly forsaken. Until the land is forsaken. 13, please. 13. Anna? 
13 says, and do a tent remains in the land, it will be it will again be laid waste. But the but as the turbine and oak leaf stamps when they are cut down, so the holy seed will be the stump in the land. So now do you understand? Explain verse 13, please. First turkey. I don't know what Terribin and O is. Okay. Uh Giselle. This is like a parable. It's just kind of a parable. Yes. Mm -hmm. You're muted, Giselle. Sir, I don't understand the meaning of terebin and oak. Or they, are, they are two types of tree. But there's something being pointed out to us here. Katrina, give it a shot. Oh, uh, I think that these two types of trees that has been an example, uh, if they have rooted up, or if they have rooted already, meaning even though they were kept down of, for example, a Christian, even though yes. or even though those have been removed, these trees have been kept down. When the words of Christ grow in them, they will still grow and spread it. Okay. Good That's thought. where it's going to start. Mary Fay. Yeah, I I actually look up the meaning of stumps. So, <laughs> well, from on my own understanding, like um, even though it will cut, it will be cut off. The bottom part, like the bottom part of those three, will be left projecting from the ground. So that means they will grow up again. Yes. Now, um, I want you to think about this because I'm not really familiar with the trees here in the Philippines. But the reason the terebinth and the oak are mentioned is because even if you cut them off at the ground, all the way down, yeah. there's going to be new branches springing up out of the yeah. stump, the leftover piece, that will grow again. Go back. And there are other trees that if you cut them off at the ground, they yeah. die. Yeah. So what God is telling us here in the book of Isaiah is that we should be rooted in the words of Christ because if we are. The trees are the people. No matter what happens to us, we can always grow back. Grow, grow back. As long as we stay rooted yeah, yeah. in the word. Okay. How am I doing on time? It looks like I'm doing okay. We will, uh, yeah, we'll end it right there. And uh, we will continue exactly. our study of uh, the parables next week. I like parables. I love I like the, parables. I like the, uh, I studied it, I listened to <laughs> What's that? I 